Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to use JavaScript and the uh, HTML5 input range element in order to create little sliders on my page that will change the background color dynamically. So, let's check it out. So I've got a page here, it's a doc type definition for HTML5, head section, I do have some internal, I have some internal styles already for the body and the headline one, but otherwise my page is pretty blank. All I have is a headline one on there, and this is what my page looks like at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the uh, body section and I'm going to create the basic form here. So I'm just going to use an opening and closing set of form tags. Let me scroll this up a little bit for you. Okay. And I'm going to uh, use, let's see, I'll have a label tag for equals red. Okay. And I'll do the color red. And then after that, I'm going to put in an input. But for the type, I'm going to put in range. So range is one of the new input elements for HTML5. There's several others, but range is pretty cool. It makes a little slider. It doesn't work in Firefox yet, but it works in um, Chrome, which is what I'll use today. It works in Opera, Safari. So it should be getting a lot of support very, very soon. So input type range. Now there's a min and there's a max you can put in. Now the min I'm going to put in, because I'm going to be changing hex codes, uh, so the min I'm going to start off with is 0, and the max is going to be 255. So color ranges from 0 to 255, those are ultimately converted into hexadecimal code. Um, 0 all the way up to FF. So we've got the min and the max, and there's also a step attribute. And the step is the increment in which you can move the slider. So if I do step equals 1, that means the slider will move 1 by 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Of course, you could also do something like step 2, and then it would go you know, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it could be different reasons why you might want to modify the step. But I'll go ahead and keep the step at 1. And let's see, I'll put this on a different line even though I'm still inside my input tag. Okay, um, My initial value, I'm going to create 0. And the value is ultimately going to be changed by the slider being dragged across. And let's see, uh, id equals red. The id attribute for my input, it makes a connection. The label for attribute matches up with the input id attribute. It's also how I'm going to refer to this element with my JavaScript. And I'll use a name attribute also. The name attribute is not functional for what we're doing, but it's often used if you're going to send this to a server. So we'll go ahead and keep that there for now. Name equals red, and that's pretty much it. So there's my slider for red. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. I'll copy it. Oops, let me get the label too. Copy, uh, control Z. Got a little too excited there. Copy. Paste, paste. Let me just knock these back a bit. And then I can modify red, green, and blue. There we go. And I've also got to change my IDs here. Okay, all up to date. So now I have three sliders for red, green, and blue. And if I go back over to my web page and check this out, refresh, now you can see I have little sliders on there. But I really can't see my text, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, beef this up a little bit with some style sheets. So I'll just scroll up to my CSS here. Okay, and for my labels, actually I'll do this for my labels and my inputs for that matter. I'm going to go ahead and do um, display as block elements, and I'll set the width to about 400 px, 400 pixels. And how about if I do color, nice bright yellow. There we go. So now we can kind of see I have these little sliders. A little visual anomaly, okay. But there we go. So now I have sliders for red, green, and blue. And basically, I want to be able to slide these and change the background color of my web page. So let's head up to the script area. So I'm going to type my script in the head section here, and I'll do it right after my style tag. I'll go ahead and create a set of script tags. There we go. And we'll start off. I'm going to go ahead and create a function. And my function is going to be called, let me move that cursor out of the way. My function will be called change background. 
my little self room to work. Closing curly braces into function. There we go. So my function will be right in here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some variables. If I can spell it. There we go. Make some variables to get the values from the sliders. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start off here. I'm going to create a variable called the uh, RD for red, and it's going to be a number. Okay. So I'm going to do a parse integer. Now what I'm going to do here though, I'm going to make sure that I get the value from the slider as a number. So it's going to be in my document. I'm going to get element by ID from red. Okay. So I'm getting an element with ID red. And if you recall, my slider has ID red. So I want to get that value. Nope, there we go. Dot value. Okay, so I'm going to get the value from the slider with the red ID, and it's going to be made into a number, an integer. Okay, so that's my variable for red. And once I've got that, I can copy this, paste it a couple times, and I can have a GN for green and a uh, BL for blue. And I'll just modify these green and blue. So now I have variables that represent the numeric values that I grab from the sliders. Okay. Now the next order of business is to convert these decimal values into hexadecimal. Okay. So we use a 10 base system of counting, but hexadecimal uses a 16 base. So it's a 0 through 9, A through F. So we've got to make this conversion into hex codes. And the way I'm going to take care of that is by creating some new variables here. So I'm going to do a variable RD hex. Okay. And this variable is going to be an if statement. Now what I want to do here though is I would run into a little issue. I want to get two digit hex codes for all of these. For instance, uh, the hex code for a particular value might be AA versus another one being 09. Let me give you a quick little example. I'm just going to use the basic Windows calculator here for a moment. Okay, here's my basic Windows calculator. And by the way, I'm already in the scientific view. So I'm in decimal mode. So if I, for instance, if I were to type in a number like, uh, let's say, 255, and I want to see this in hex, we see that's FF. So 255 is equivalent to FF. 255 decimal is a hex code FF. Let me go back to decimal and let's try number 100. 100 in decimal is 64 in hex. Hex uses numbers and letters. Okay, let's try something else here. What about the number 5? Number 5 in decimal in hex is 5. All right, that makes sense. What about the number 10 in decimal? The number 10 in decimal is the letter A in hex. So, I need two digits each. So basically, I don't want just A. I want uh, zero A. And there's going to be a point to where it will go double digits. For instance, under decimal, if I do the number 15, the hex version of that is F. But if I do decimal 16, the hex version is 10. So basically, 15 and below are single digits, and I want them to be double digits. I want a leading zero. So I'm going to use a, an if statement here, basically. if the value for RD, oops, I gotta click in here. If my value for RD is less than 16, let me put spaces so it's a little more readable. Okay. So this is my logical test. If my RD value is less than 16, and remember my RD value is simply the value from the slider. If it's less than 16, it's only one digit, and I want it to be two digits. Question mark. So here's my logical test, RD less than 16. Now if that's true. I want to take a zero and I want to add it to my RD value, okay? But I don't just want my regular RD value. I want the hexadecimal version of my RD value. So I'm going to do RD dot two string 16, okay? So this will be the 16 based version. So two string is a method of a number object. My object here is this uh, 
numeric value from the red slider, I'm going to convert it to a 16 base hex. If it's something like, let's say it's 15, we know that's the hex code F. So if it's under 16, and if it's a 15, it'll be 0F. So that'll be the hex code. Now, if it's not, so I do a colon now for the if false statement. If it's not less than 16, then all I really want is the hex version of that RD value. And that's the end of that statement. Okay, let me zoom out so we can see this a little bit in its entirety here. So my red hex variable is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a zero plus my hex version of the value, or it's just going to be the hex version of my value. I don't know which. It all depends on the value that somebody chooses. If they choose 0 through 15, I'm going to get a 0 plus the hex version of red. Otherwise, I'll just get the hex version of red. So that's the basic syntax there. I'm going to go ahead and grab this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it a couple more times, and I can modify it here. I'll have red hex. Oops, that should be green. I'll do green hex, blue hex, and then I can just make these little modifications here. GN, BL, GN, BL. Oops, got to make these changes here too. GN and BL. Okay. So now we're getting our variables, we're getting our values from the sliders, and we're converting those values into hexadecimal code.